the news vendor model demand forecast. So marketing is forecasting that uh, the demand for O'Neill's Hammer's suit, wetsuit, will be 3,200 units. Should we trust it? Well, if we want to think about how much we should trust the forecast, it's a good idea to look at past forecasts and also past demands that correspond to those forecasts, right? And we will find out that if you look at historical data, uh, we, will, we will find out that uh, often demand was actually higher than the forecast or lower than the forecast, right? Here you see a chart that represents past performance, forecasting performance of our marketing department. Every point is corresponding to um, one product which uh, had a certain forecast. This is on the horizontal axis, you see a forecast. And on the vertical axis, you see the actual demand. The diagonal line is a line that would be corresponding to a perfect forecasting. So if there is a point on a line, which I think there are some here or very close to it, right? Those points uh, correspond to the situation where forecast and the actual demand were uh, equal. However, when there is a point that is below the line, the forecast was much higher than the actual de demand. And when there was a point that is above the line, the forecast was too low. The demand, actual demand, was higher. So we see that performance of the uh, marketing department forecasting um, process was not perfect. And so we have some data to understand how much we can trust this forecast. But we can actually do even more. What we can do is we can build a distribution function that represents a range of possibilities based on historical forecasts. So the main point here is, is we do not want to rely on a one-point forecast like 3,200 units. Instead, we will build a distribution function, for example, a normal distribution, that represents a range of possibilities based on historical forecasts. So how do we construct a normal distribution for the demand forecast? Well, we can calculate something called AF ratio. AF ratio is actual over forecasted demand. So we divide A, actual demand, by the forecasted demand using historical data, as many points as we can collect. Once we calculate this, we can then calculate a mean of this AF ratio and the standard deviation of this AF ratio. Right? So we can obtain two uh, statistics for this AF ratio. And if we assume the distribution of our forecasts uh, is, um, is normal, then we can build a normal distribution uh, for the new uh, forecast for this new product, O'Neill um, wetsuit, Hammer wetsuit, right? by taking the mean AF ratio and multiplying it by the forecast 3,200, and taking the standard deviation of the AF ratio and also multiplying it by the forecasted Im amount. So how ca can we do this in Excel? Here we have the data about a number of products at O'Neill with forecasted values and actual demand values. So we can calculate our AF ratio by dividing the actual forecast, actual demand, sorry, by the forecasted demand. This could also be called forecasted demand, but for short, I call it forecast. So this is actual over forecasted. That's the ratio, right? And if the ratio is higher than one, then the forecast was too low. The actual demand was uh, higher than, than forecasted. And if the ratio is... is um, is lower than one, like in this case, then that means the forecast was too optimistic, the actual demand was lower. So we can calculate this for all our cases, right? So we have all the ratios. And now what we can do is we can calculate the mean ratio, or it's average, not mean in Excel, right? It's 0 0.9976. And we can also calculate standard deviation if you want for a, could calculate it for a sample of 
would be more appropriate, but we will use the standard deviation ST def function. And um, we will see from this uh, two things. First, we see the bias. The AF ratio, if there is no bias in forecasting, then the AF ratio should be equal to 1 or very close to 1. Here we see that the ratio is slightly lower than, uh, than the um, than one, which but only slightly, so there is very little bias, right? And if anything, the bias is a little bit optimistic, so that right, this is the case where the actual is slightly less than the forecasted value, the actual demand. Uh, but it's quite actually quite an unbiased forecast from this uh, analysis. And also, what we see is we see a standard deviation, which tells us how much the the, the forecast is, can be wrong, right? The larger the standard deviation compared to the mean, the, the, the more variability we have in the forecast, in the demand, right, uh, compared to the forecasted values. So now if we start with the forecasted value of 3,200 units, what we can actually do is we can calculate expected demand Right? Based on this value, we can take this value and multiply it by the average AF ratio, this one. So we can calculate what we called mu. Right? Mu is 3,200 times the AF ratio, or AF ratio times uh, mean AF ratio. And then we can calculate standard deviation of uh, the right of demand standard deviation of demand that's sigma right and the sigma will also be standard deviation of AF ratio multiplied by the forecasted value times this right so what we get here instead of having a single point forecast we obtain two values that are parameters, and if we assume the distribution of the, the forecasted demand is normal, then we can say um, we have a forecast with a mean value, 3192, as you can see, slightly less, because we're trying to account for the bias of our marketing department. They slightly overestimate, so we reduced it a little bit. And But we also have a standard deviation, so we know how much variability around this mean value we can experience. So here is a summary of what we did. We took historical demand data and forecast data. Right? This is just a sample, first three, right? We, from O'Neill's products, right? something that was done with the same kind of forecasting procedure or process. We calculated then AF ratios, which are actual demands divided by forecasted values. So these are, right? If it's one or close to one, that's a good forecast. If it's lower than one, we overestimate it. If it's higher than one, we underestimate it in the forecast, the actual demand. Then we calculated the average and standard deviation. And then we this took this average and multiplied by the one point forecast and standard deviation multiplied by the one point forecast to obtain mu and sigma for the normal distribution of the demand of uh, O'Neill's hammer wetsuit. So you see the AF ratios are kind of universal for all products that are forecasted using the same method. And uh, these values, mean and standard deviation, are actually for this particular product, this Hammer 3.2 wetsuit, right? How do they, wh why is this for this product? Because we use the one point forecast 3,200. So what is the advantage of using the normal distribution over a single point forecast, 3,200. Well, the advantage is that now we can calculate something like what's the probability that the demand will be no more than 4,000 units. Why? Because this kind of probability is actually a value of the cumulative distribution function, right, which is in statistics usually called, uh, denoted with capital F, F for this assumed normal distribution. And we can calculate it as a uh, f of 4,000, and the value here is 75.3%. So, for example, if we order 4,000 units, we will know that there is 75.3% that it will actually satisfy, we will satisfy 
all demand or in stock probability in the, the season, throughout the season, is 75.3%. To calculate this function in Excel, you can use the norm dist function with providing it with value 4,000, the value for, of the uh, order quantity 4,000, with the mean and standard deviation that we calculated for our normal distribution, and providing value 1 here to indicate we were considering a cumulative um, distribution function value. This is, by the way, the picture of the cumulative distribution function value, and this is the probability density function for the normal distribution. Also, we can do inverse calculations. So we can actually take, for example, what's the um, demand in 10% worst cases, worst in this case, meaning the lowest possible demands. Assuming we know this normal distribution, right? This is the normal distribution for our demand actually plotted with an average of 3,192 and sigma uh, 1,181. So we can actually ask ourselves, in the 10% worst cases, what is the, the demand going to be? And we can use the inverse of the cumulative distribution function. So we can actually take 10% and map it back to a certain quantity. And that quantity happens to be 1678, 1678. And that means that in the 10% lowest demand cases, the demand will be 1678 or less. This value can be obtained in Excel using a norm inv function, right? So it's taking normal distribution function, but the inverse of it, you provide the value 10% or 0 0.1 and the mean and standard deviation, and you obtain and this quantity. By the way, these are rounded values, similarly to mu and sigma. I put rounded values because they are quite large and the fraction is very minimal, so I could round them, but in principle, there would be fractional values, and even this value will also be fractional.